I've had a few people uh, ask me about my boat and to do a walk around and what it is. So it's a Sea Arc 2072 FXJT. I really don't know what FX stands for, but it's a jet tunnel. It's 20 feet long and the floor is 72 inches wide. Uh, from rail to rail, with the gunnel to gunnel, it's 96 inches wide. And of course the floor is 72 inches wide. Uh, I've got an 80 horsepower. It's a it's a Yamaha 11580 jet. So that's a 115 power head. And once you put a jet lower unit on it, it reduces about 30%. So it's 80 horsepower at the jet. If it had a regular outboard lower unit on it, it'd be a 115. And it is a jet tunnel. So there's the tunnel feeds the jet and it allows your jet foot to sit up above the bottom of the boat so as long as I can if I can get over it I'm never gonna hit my motor that's the whole point of a jet um, back here I have two trolling motor batteries it's a 24 volt system I have an 80 pound thrust Minn Kota iPilot Tarova saltwater edition I bought the boat when I lived in Florida, so that's why I have the saltwater edition. Back here I have a just a fishing net and a, a mushroom anchor. One thing about a jet is uh, there's no lower unit hanging down in the water when you're anchored. So if the wind's blowing around or there's no current, the ass end wants to swing around a lot. So I have an anchor for the back and an anchor for the front. A um, little bit of storage here. There's the anchor over there. Over here I have my cranking battery. It also powers my fish finder. It powers all the lights and everything on the boat and the fish finder. Inside this box here I have a battery charger, small extension cord, some tools, a shovel, uh, just a little tool kit, things you might need while you're on the water. I also carry about 24 inches of weed eater string. With a jet unit, you know, you're sucking water up and you're running real shallow. So sometimes your thermostat can get clogged or the, the telltale pee hole will get clogged. One of the best ways that you can unclog that is just run some weed eater string up in there and, and work it up and down and it'll clear it up. And I always carry the weed eater string. The toolkit's mainly for the thermostat. If you suck up mud and a bunch of junk inside your motor, your thermostat can get clogged and it won't pump water. Or it'll pump, but it'll just be clogged up in the thermostat and it'll never clear out. It's got a seat base back here for rear fishermen. And most of the time, I mean, I love to fish, but half the time I'm just riding around having fun. So I got it set up right now with just three seats in the back. And these seats are on what's called a J-Track. They just kind of hinge in there fold up you can slide them any way you want get them positioned for good balance and then the driver's seat is up here it's uh that was the center seat was the driver's seat when i got the boat and then i bought this one here it's a little it's a little more comfortable i figure i'm the captain and i can have a more comfortable seat that box there's a live well uh it takes water in from the back and you, it's aerated so you can fill it, <clears throat> but I don't use it for a live well. It's it's more of a bait well is what I would call it. It's, I mean, I don't know what kind of fish you're going to put in there unless you're fishing for bluegill or something. I usually only fish for catfish now that I'm in Ohio. In Florida, it was reds and black drum, trout and stuff. But if I caught those, I just put them on ice in the cooler. So uh, I keep this cooler here just for drinks and everything. If I'm going to, if I plan on keeping some fish, then I'll, I'll bring another cooler just to put fish in as a, and it ain't a live well. I'm not a tournament fisherman. I don't care about keeping fish alive. I put them straight on ice. If I'm gonna keep a fish, it's cause I'm gonna eat it. Uh, inside there, it's just, uh, like I said, it's a bait well, but I have a cast net and some tackle and different supplies and stuff. And the console, let me climb up in here. There's a look inside there. I have some pedestal mounts. I have a pedestal for the front, a pedestal for the back that I keep in here. 
it's rare that somebody's going to fish off a pedestal in this boat. Up on the console, got a little rants each, whatever is a hook five, hook four, just a little four inch screen. It works good. It tells me GPS speed, uh, the depth of the water and the temperature. That's the only things I really care about. The water that I'm on, I don't need a GPS. I'm on lakes and little rivers around here. If you get lost, you've got a big problem. Underneath the console, a little bit of storage. I have a little uh, plastic dry box in there that I keep my registration, flare gun, different safety stuff, all the legal stuff you need. You can all push, put your keys and wallet and everything. And then I got a little tackle box there that just stays in the boat. And then I have some more tackle that stays in the underneath the seat here. Uh, here on the side, each side of the console, I have a rod holder. Each side has a a bait knife, matching pair of pliers, and then I have these. I got these in Florida, just leaders, and they work really good for fishing for catfish. Everybody says they're too big and that the catfish can see them or whatever. I think that's a bunch of bullshit because I've caught catfish, I've caught trout, I've caught redfish, everything on those things. And they're they're bottom fishing rigs for the ocean, but they work great in freshwater too. All this fancy stuff that everybody does, I don't think you need it. Uh, so up front it's got the big deck uh, this whole rear compartment here is the fuel tank it's a 36 gallon fuel tank i've never ever needed to burn 36 gallons of gas in this boat next compartment up is just storage I have some tools and supplies and safety equipment and all. I keep all my life jackets in there. If somebody needs to bring a code or whatever, you can throw it in there. Then there's the, the forward mounted seat and I have the pedestal for that. This compartment up here, it's the anchor locker. And of course, down in there's my anchor. It's padded that way when you're banging around and chopping a three degree V bottom boat doesn't bang too dang bad and i got a couple of little lights that i bought here they're not they're just battery powered led lights i don't do much i've done a little bow fishing but i just kind of do it in the daytime i don't care that's the quick release mount for the minco trolling motor that i rarely ever use up here you have your plug-in for your trolling motor and a tilt and trim switch for your motor and then of course for your light to your navigation light to plug in. Uh, I've got monster rod holders mounted on the front deck, both sides. That way you can fish one person off the front. Moving back. I have two more monster rod holders. One there, one over there. That's for somebody to fish off the center seat. And then I have Scotty rod holders in the back. Uh, couldn't figure out a good way to mount some monsters back there. Plus, I kind of like the clean look of the Scotties. And they, they can rotate, you know, in and out or whatever. I usually keep these mounted straight back. These are mounted a little bit of an angle. And then the ones up front are mounted straight out. Or if you're going to just sit idle in a lake, you can, uh, you, can, you can move them any way you want to, like, have a kind of a spider rig all over the boat. I don't like to fish more than two or three people, three people at the most, one in the back, one in the center, and then one up front. Uh, my Minn Kota Tarova has the, the remote control that you use to control. It goes around your neck and it's a remote control. And to be honest, I prefer a hand controlled trolling motor better, but if I'm sitting here, I can control the trolling motor. If I have a fisherman up front, if I got some, if I, if, even if I'm in the back, I can control the trolling motor that's mounted up front. Most people are familiar with that. And that's kind of it. Uh, the boat uh, is 125 gauge aluminum. When you get to the, I think the 1872 Sea Arcs and the 2072s, the hull is 125 gauge. And below that, I think they're 100 gauge. This is one of those little lights. It's got some different colors. The 
it's a pretty tough boat. The thing about Sea Arc is, I mean, they're tough boats. Everybody that any that knows about John boats knows they're pretty tough. There's not a whole lot of creature comforts. I mean, basically, this is just a giant John boat. A big, strong, basically a commercial hull John boat. And uh, that's what I like about it. I don't like a lot of fancy stuff. I got a fancy LED light here. A couple of bulbs are burnt out, it looks like. And I told you I had uh, a pair of pliers and a bait knife on each side. I keep a fillet knife over here and some grippers. I, to be honest, I've never actually used those. I'd usually just lip a fish or grab it. So, But they're there just in case. Uh, I keep a little bit of, keep a machete over there and some flagging tape. Uh, if I want to do bush hooks or set a trot line or whatever, I can flag the limb. And if I got to cut some brush out of the way or whatever, I have it. <clears throat> the boat runs, when I first got it, it had an aluminum impeller with an aluminum sleeve, of course, from the factory. Uh, with just me by myself, it had run about 32 miles an hour with a light load and only about 10 to 15 gallons of gas. If I had three or four people in it, it'd run about 29 or 30. Uh, since then, I ha had a, put a couple of posts on some Facebook pages. I had a aluminum, my aluminum impeller imploded. I mean, it just broke, came apart. I didn't hit anything, didn't do anything weird. The dang thing just came apart. So I got with uh, River Rat Pump Works. I think he's out of Missouri and got a stainless steel impeller. It's a little bit different cut. And uh, the day that I went to test it, and I haven't had the boat out since, the day that I went to test it, it was really rough out, big white caps and everything. And the boat does pretty good in white cap, but still, I mean, it's an aluminum boat and you'll beat your shit out of yourself. It's not that it cavitates or anything like that. You just trim down a little bit and hammer down. And the boat's big enough being a 2072, it can, it can handle some chop, but you just beat the shit out of yourself. So I was only, I got up to 29 miles an hour, but it had a lot more to go. I'm hopeful that it's gonna hit probably 35 miles an hour with the new stainless impeller. It sure seemed to jump out of the hole a lot quicker. It got up on plane real quick. And it, I, the, the acceleration was, the, I could feel it. It was significantly better than the stock impeller. Uh, oh, one of the things a lot of people, anytime I post a picture of the boat, everybody asks me, what is this? What is this thing? Well, it's a stick it pin. And some people call them a spud pole. Look over here. I have the pole down here. It's kind of like a, a hu I call it a human powered power pole. You just run it through there. You pull it out of these mounts here. And run it through that. The tube back here sticks down through there and sticks in the bottom of the lake or the river or wherever you're at and it acts like a shallow water anchor is all it is. Uh, what else can I think of? I guess uh, back here underneath the floor, you can't see it of course because the floor is in it, but underneath the floor there's a, a 500 gallon per hour aerator pump and twin uh, 500 gallon per hour bilge pumps. There's Because there's a tunnel and it comes up into the floor each side of the tunnel on the left and right side each side of the tunnel this side and this side down in the bottom I have twin 500 gallon an hour one on each side bilge pumps and if I ever knock a hole in it by hitting a limestone shoal or something I guess hopefully it'll hopefully it'll pump it out otherwise the insurance claim will get it and I'll get me a new boat who knows? But uh, some people had asked about the boat, and I just figured I'd do a little walk around and show some people what it was. I'm real happy with it. I like it. If I could have done anything different, when I bought the boat, I lived in Florida. And I bought it in 2016. I lived in Florida. Center console is king in Florida. And it was perfect there. Now that I live in Ohio, uh, you know, in Florida, you can fish year-round all the time. The last time I fished in Florida, it was in December, and I was wearing shorts and went swimming. So uh, here in Ohio, it's not the case. If I could do anything different, if I would have ordered it now, I would have gotten the front walkthrough windshield 
and that way I could put an enclosure over it and run a little heater or something. Because this thing will bust ice. I ain't worried about that as long as it's not too thick. But uh, I guess until then, I'll just wear heavy clothes and waders and everything else. But it sure would have been nice if I had known that I was going to move to Ohio six months after I bought the damn boat. I would have ordered the forward console with the walkthrough, and then I could put an enclosure over it. But anyhow, if you got any questions or whatever, leave them in the comments. Uh, I'm no pro YouTuber or anything, so... Give me a break when it comes to some of this. Just a guy with a cell phone walking around in circles talking about his damn boat.